Hi guys and welcome to my first reading wrap up of 2020. This year I am doing things a little bit differently and I will explain why now. I started at the beginning of the year logging everything I was reading on Goodreads just as I have done for the last five or six years and that was going fine but I suddenly realised that what I was doing was I was finishing a book and I was literally finishing it because some chemicals were going off in my brain every time I hit the red button on Goodreads and literally I felt that the only reason I was finishing books was to add it to my Goodreads challenge and this year my reading has changed as well so I've been reading lots but I haven't necessarily been finishing lots I've been reading non-fiction I've been reading other stuff that just doesn't necessarily fit into that you read it then you finish it mold like poetry and the other thing that I was feeling was that I was reading books every month but I felt like I had to finish them by the end of that month so I was rushing things or I wasn't reading something because I didn't think I'd be able to fit it in by the end of the month and so I wouldn't be able to put it into a monthly reading wrap up so I just decided I've got to take this stress out of my life because it was stressing me out so much and I think there was a light bulb moment one evening when I went to add something to Goodreads and I thought I haven't got everything I want out of this book I've read it but I don't feel like I've taken anything from the experience all I want is the buzz that comes with putting that I've read something on Goodreads and that was not good. So I've changed the system. So I'm going to do recent reads wrap ups. So wrap ups might be every month, they might be every month and a half, they might be every two weeks. I am not going to stick a schedule on my reading wrap ups. I'm gonna talk about lots of books in every wrap up so you're not gonna miss out in any way whatsoever. In fact, I think that these wrap ups are gonna be so much better and I'll get into that a bit later. But the other thing that I've done is that I'm putting some books on Goodreads still but I've now got a reading diary where I have a page to put the books that I read every month with the number I've read that month and also with a number of however many I've read so far this year so in February I read three books and that takes my total up to 11 whereas in January I read eight books so in doing this one I read more in January and that was great and two I read less in February and that was also great because I was still reading just as much but it's given me so much more freedom to read longer books, to read books that I wouldn't have read otherwise because I just wouldn't have thought I'd have finished them in time. This is gonna work for everyone, I think. So that's my little disclaimer, my little notice at the start of this reading wrap up. It is the first of the year and we'll see how it goes. If it works, then great. If it doesn't, we can always go back. But I think this is gonna be so much better for everyone. I think you'll enjoy them more because I'll be talking about poetry and all kinds of books that. I just wouldn't have done otherwise I'd be reading longer books books that you've wanted me to read for ages so I think it's gonna work I think it's gonna be great but that is what's going on and now we've got that out of the way we can get into talking about some of the books that I have read since the beginning of 2020 I would like to begin by talking about my favorite book of the year so far I, this has been my most anticipated release ever since I first heard about it I've been so excited to read it and the public publisher kindly sent me a copy of it but that in no way affects my opinion because I was gonna buy it anyway so it was just a nice bonus and it is Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. Isabel Greenberg is my favourite graphic novelist. She's written and illustrated to others the Encyclopedia of Early Earth and the 100 Nights of Hero and this is her latest and as soon as I tell you what it's about you'll realise why it is basically my personal perfect book. This is a retelling of the young Bronte children's works. So when they were younger, Charlotte, Branwell, Emily and Anne wrote stories set in a fictional world called Glass Town and Angria and then Emily and Anne went away and they created their world of Gonzal but Glass Town and Angria was Charlotte Bronte and Branwell Bronte's baby and what Isabel Greenberg has done in Glass Town is look at Charlotte's life and where the juvenilia fit into her life and she has also told the story that is going on in 
the Juvenilia itself. So it starts with an older Charlotte Bronte meeting face to face with one of the characters that she wrote and it then tells the story itself so you find out more about what was going on in the world of Glastown but the really good thing about this is that it does update it for a modern audience and Isabel Greenberg is very good at doing this. I was slightly worried because if you have ever read any of the Bronte's Juvenilia then there are themes of colonialism and all kinds of things like that that don't exactly translate particularly well for a modern audience and I think that is one of the challenges of working with the Bronte Juvenilia which is fine like we might not accept it now but that was normal to the Bronte children but when you are adapting it to a modern age you need to be really aware of that and Isabel Greenberg is and I think she does a really good job. She hasn't just taken the Juvenilia and illustrated it she's made the story her own and she's very good at world building she She's been very good at it in her previous two works and that was something I really loved in her previous graphic novels and so she is the perfect person to tell this story because it's such a large world but she handles it seamlessly. Isabel Greenberg uses colour really well within the story, there are different colour schemes used for the different timelines so it makes it very clear which part of the story you are reading and looking at. I have to admit that I might have cried when I was reading this because it meant so much to me to see this story playing out and I felt the emotions that Charlotte was feeling in later life. I felt the wonder that the young Bronte children felt as they created their world and the illustrations capture their emotions and their expressions and everything about their lives so perfectly. You can really tell she has done great research and look into the tiny details about how the Brontes lived. I am probably the worst person to review a book like this because I have a tendency to be pretty harsh when it comes to reworkings of Bronte novels and that's just because I know quite a lot about the Brontes. I have read extensively their novels and also about their lives but there were no issues that I could find with Glastown and if you love the Brontes and want to find out more about the Juvenilia this is amazing. If you're looking for a great graphic novel but don't necessarily know anything or love the Brontes novels this is still amazing. It can be loved by Bronte fans and non-Bronte fans alike and so it does have a certain universality about it that I adored. I feel like even though it is so early in the year I can safely say that this might be my favourite book of the year. I really don't think that's gonna change. I loved it. I thought that this was all of my dreams come true. And then we move on to not a graphic novel but an illustrated work. This is The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady by Edith Holden. This is a book that I have owned for quite a while. It was a TV series, I don't know when, in maybe the 70s or 80s and it was very popular for a very long time. I think it's probably most popular now on Instagram because you always see people featuring the book on their Instagram pages, particularly if they're interested in nature or want a nature inspired post so I've seen it around there a lot and I think that that was the first place I'd seen it quite a few years ago but it basically is a diary of Edith Holden's documenting the passing seasons in the year so it goes through month by month and she shares illustrations of the things that she has seen as well as poems and sayings and brief notes on the things that she has seen as the seasons go by. I thought it was a a really sweet book and it feels very nostalgic too as well as the book it was also fashioned into patterns and diaries and all kinds of other things related to Edith Holden's illustrations and I love the design so much and these illustrations this is not a book I'm ever gonna get rid of it took me a while to track it down but the best place I found to buy the book is in a charity shop or secondhand online because I don't think it's in print anymore so if you'd like to get your hands Hands on this do be aware of that. A book I have been reading over the past month but haven't finished yet is The Old Ways by Robert McFarlane. He is probably my favourite nature writer. I loved Landmarks by him and I've read some of his other stuff before. The Lost Words is one of the best books ever and this was one of his earlier books. 
I love this and the reason I haven't finished it yet and actually probably this is one of the books that kind of inspired my decision to change the way I was reading is that I'm loving it so much why do I want to finish it now I want to eke out the reading experience for as long as I can because I get so much out of this when I read it that I don't want to just finish it in one go and then that's it I'm gonna forget about it this is a book that I really want to take my time with and I really want to explore it because the book really is about exploring the landscapes and I'd love to go to some of the places in the book and read other chapters while I'm there. I want to feel as I'm reading it that I'm having an experience with a book like this and so I am taking my time with it and I am really loving it. The basic premise of the book is that Robert McFarlane is exploring the old ways, the paths that have been in Britain for millennia and not just physical paths but paths across oceans and paths that have history to them. One of the things that I love about Robert McFarlane's writing is that he leads me in lots of different directions so he references other books and other writers in here that I love to then go and read. So one of the other writers that I have been reading since is Edward Thomas. I have his collected poems and I've been loving picking this up whenever I feel like I'm in the mood. There have been a few poems in here that I've underlined because I want to save them for later and really Edward Thomas is a nature poet at heart and there are so many things that I love about his poetry that really speak to me. Though if you haven't read any of his poetry I really would recommend it. I feel like if you're a bit hesitant to read poetry too or find it difficult his poetry is pretty easy to read and that's also something that I like about it. It's easy but it has very complex themes and ideas and I think that is the mark of a good poet. So both of these are amazing and I'm looking forward to continuing my journey with them. Whenever I feel like I'm slipping into a reading slump or don't know what to read, my go-to author recently has been Georgette Hare and the most recent book that I read was Venetia. I feel like this might be my favourite so far. I have also read Arabella and I've read The Convenient Marriage. I read that at the end of 2019 and I really liked this. They are very tropey books, but Georgia had basically invented the tropes that she's writing and so I can forgive that and sometimes that's what you want. I get asked sometimes that because I read classics do I read stuff that aren't considered classic or might be considered slightly trashier books, but these aren't trash. For in some people's eyes they might be cast aside as just romance but there's so much in here, so much historical background and knowledge. Georgette Hare was an incredible researcher and so she's writing about the Regency and you know she knows her stuff. She has some really unique insight into the period that will really expand your knowledge of it and I liked this one because it basically is about a girl who has always been very good getting mixed up with the local bad boy um, in Regency terms and he turns out not to be as bad as everybody thinks and she discovers that but everybody still thinks that he's bad and so she has to kind of face that stigma. But even though our protagonist Venetia is seen as the good girl she does have a lot of fight in her. You get this image of the past where all females were just quiet meek things and that's not the case and Georgette Hare is very aware of that that actually women were multifaceted then just like they are now and every woman you meet in the Regency period was different and so all of her characters are different in her book and I really loved Venetia. I loved the spark within her and I feel like this is a book that I am going to be returning to. I like reading some of the scenes sometimes even if I don't reread the whole book again. I like to read my favourite chapters and just check in with the characters and see how they're doing. So if you're looking for something that is so easy to read that you'll just race through and then feel like oh, I just want to read it all over again you need to read Georgette Hare. She is fantastic and Venetia would be a really fantastic place to start. Another book I've read is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, my first Edith Wharton book of the year. I'm not going to talk about this in this video because I've just uploaded a reading vlog where I mainly focused on reading The House of Mirth and discussed all of my thoughts so if you'd like to hear more you can go and watch that. I'll link it in the description and 
up here wherever it is as well. Last year I read Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney and even though I hated absolutely everything about the book I actually loved the book. I hated all the people in it, I hated what they were doing but I loved the writing style and I loved Sally Rooney's insight. And she's quite controversial. Some people love her writing, some people hate it, some people just don't get it. And I am of the opinion that I am a Sally Rooney lover and there's something about her books that you can just fall into and they're quite complex in theme, but quick to read. And the more I read of her writing, the more I like her. So in the last month, I have read Normal People and my main motivation for reading this is that it's going to be a BBC Three adaptation within the next few months I think so I wanted to read it before I watched it. I watched the trailer which I thought was really good and then it reminded me that I had a copy and so I thought it's about time that I read this. And this follows two characters Connell and Marianne from when they are young and kind of start this relationship that they don't tell anyone about and then they go away to university and and it's about them growing up and changing and I liked Connell, I didn't always like the things that he did but I liked him as a character. I struggled to kind of understand Marianne but that was more because of my life experiences and the things I can relate to rather than that she's a totally unlikable character. I feel like there is a touch of the unlikable in all of Sally Rooney's characters and that's a good thing because real people all have a touch of the unlikable. There will be some people in life who don't like me and other people who will like me for the reasons others dislike me. And this is something that Sally Rooney is aware of. And I think that's what makes her characters so complex. And one of the reasons that I think her books have been so successful because she taps into this and you can kind of go, yeah, I can relate to that. And I know that I don't want to relate to that, but I know that that's one of my character flaws. And she is quite observant in that manner. So I feel like I'm gonna try and read everything that she writes in the future. I might not like all of her books, but so far she has been a big hit with me. And I think that you've got to give her books a go because you won't know if you like them until you read them. So this was a big success with me. I really liked it and I can't wait to watch the upcoming adaptation. And then the final book I want to talk to you about is the most recent book that I have finished reading and it is called Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. This has only just come out and it has proved really popular it's hit lots of bestseller lists and lots of people have been talking about it and I bought it and then I read the first page and then I just knew that I had to read it then and there I couldn't put it down I found that the writing style was intensely readable and there was something about it that just drew me in this is set in America and it follows Amira who is a babysitter for a white family and when she goes to the supermarket one night with the child that she's babysitting she gets stopped by I suppose the security guard is what we'd say in the UK but I don't know if it kind of defers in the US and she gets stopped and questioned and is basically told you cannot be looking after that child because of the way that you look and not just the way that you look but the way that you are dressed you do not look like you are fit to look after this child and for Amira this starts a chain of events this incident is recorded and she then meets again the man who has recorded it we learn more about inspirational blogger mother Alex whose child Amira babysits and is about race and relationships and leaves you with the question who is in the right and who is in the wrong. It is, like I said, intensely readable and I think it's something that everybody should read. This is one I would highly recommend because I raced through it. It is fantastic. I think it would be very hard not to love. So those are the books that I have read recently. I really hope you enjoyed this video and this slightly different format. I don't think there'll be any huge differences that you can notice, but I hope that you have enjoyed it nonetheless. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!